Hallelujah. Glory to God this morning. Everybody that's viewing our World Embassy broadcast, hallelujah, from Facebook Live right now. Glory to God. We would like to tell everybody happy Father's Day. Glory. Hallelujah. I am so excited to be here this morning, hallelujah, to hear the word of God, hallelujah, and what he has prepared for us this Father's Day. So let's get into prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you and praising you. We give your name all the praise, the glory, the honor, hallelujah. We sanctify this ground for you, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, everywhere, wherever our members are watching, from home, from work, from their car, we sanctify this ground right now, wherever they're at. It is sanctified and prepared for your word. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that we are good ground. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for the word that you have for us this morning. We thank you, Father, for our spiritual father being able to come to us this morning and deliver it. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that he has a free flow this morning. We thank you, Father, for your presence that's here with us. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father, for Jesus this morning. And we give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Let us prepare our hearts. I'm about to bring before you the man of God, my spiritual father, Dr. Andre Galladay. Hallelujah. And before we bring him up, I just want to say one, a few things right now. I just want to say thank you um, to Dr. Andre for taking up the mantle as my spiritual father. Uh, many years ago, many, many years ago, I was a very lost young man just swaying to and fro. And one encounter I had with him changed my whole life. I've been with him for a long time. And at the time of me just being wild out in the streets, I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know how to get there. And after these years, I have everything that I've ever wanted in life. I have a beautiful wife. I have a beautiful home. I have beautiful children. I make the type of money I want to make, but I'm going to make more. Hallelujah. And most importantly of all, I have a relationship with God. And I give my pastor, my father, thank you. Thank you from a son to his father. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done for me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give the Lord a shout this morning. Hallelujah. And give, the, give, your, give Dr. Andre a little hand praise honor, a big hand praise honor as he comes up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, that was some good stuff. I think I'm going to let you get up and say that every Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Yes, yeah, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Um, this morning is Father's Day. I just want to say to all the fathers, um, happy Father's Day. For all of you all that I have not talked to or texted back and forth with as of yet, I just want to make sure that I send out the my shout outs this morning to all of the dads out there, all of the dads that's joining us this morning. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. And I tell you, man, I hope that this is a special day for you. Um, come and get that. that this is a special day for you. And that you are able to enjoy your day, enjoy your family, and uh, be appreciated. Amen. Glory to God. Well, this is church. Hallelujah. This is church. And we are here to praise the Lord. I got about five. We, I said we're here to praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We don't come to church without praising the Lord. Glory to God. We are here to hear the word and we are here to celebrate the Lord this morning. We are here to celebrate our Father, our Heavenly Father, the greatest Father of all. And because He is so wonderful, our lives are where they are today. And as Brother Sylvester said this morning when he opened up, I am, I am uh, one of those that's most grateful for what my Father has done for me, my spiritual Father, my Heavenly Father. He has taken my life to places that I only dreamed of before. And so I concur with his words. Uh, I just want to just uh, be appreciative this morning to the Father. Now, let's get into the word this morning. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, happy Sunday. Thank you all for joining. Uh, Father's Day is a special day. I think that it is appropriate to celebrate dads just like we celebrate moms. It's appropriate to do that. And I think that uh, dads deserve a day. 
But as I told you all this week earlier, as I told you all this week earlier, uh, this year we took seven days, and Father Day started Monday. Amen. Glory to God. So we'll we'll see about next year. But this year we had seven days. It's going to end today. All right. Glory to God. Now I was going to I was going to um, I was putting together a nice little Father's Day message, you know. And I had it in my mind. It was going to be so cute. But uh, the father kind of arrested me and told me, I have an assignment for you. I want you to go and I want you to bless the fathers. I want you to bless them in a very particular way. And so I am here on assignment this morning. And even though it's Father's Day, it is also a day that the father wants you to be blessed. He is after your finances. So for all you dads that's listening, the father sent me to get you. Glory to God. And your life is about to move. Hallelujah. If there's any dads in the house, that's a good place to say amen. Amen. Now let's pray. Father, according to your decree in Ephesians 4, concerning the perfecting the gifts, perfecting the saints, we submit ourselves to this process today. Holy Spirit, you are our senior pastor. I am your vessel. So think through my mind, speak through my mouth, and give us revelation that will move us forward. Open the hearts of your hearts and eyes and ears of your people so that we hear your word and bring forth much fruit. Thank you, Father, for our open heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Now, we honor the presence of God today, man. The Father's presence is already here. Uh, the Holy Spirit is already here, and it is, there is nothing like the presence of God. There is nothing like the presence of God. It is something that you cannot manufacture. It's something that you cannot fake. His presence is either here or it's not. And thank God his presence is here. Amen. So today, I'm going to talk to you a little for just a few moments. Not a very long message, but it's entitled The Positive Money Flow of Fatherhood. The Positive Money Flow of Fatherhood. The Positive Money Flow of Fatherhood. Well, that's a strange lesson, Dr. Andre, on Father's Day. Yeah, I know, but the Holy Spirit has a plan. He's, he, he's trying, he wants to get something to you. He wants to, he wants to move you to a new level in your finances. And so he sent me to get you. Zechariah chapter number three, verse number one. That's where we'll start today. Zechariah, Zechariah chapter three, verse one. And it says, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Now, remember that that's very important. Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Joshua, the high priest. Now, so listen, the most widespread dilemma that affects the largest number of people across all lines, gender lines, um, nationality, religious lines, geographical lines. The Holy Spirit revealed to me one of the greatest dilemmas uh, that, 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 that affects the largest amount of people is stagnation. Stagnation. Stagnation is... Uh, the lack of flow. It is stuckness. It is being limited. Stagnation is resistance from going beyond the point. So if you are trying to go beyond the point and just can't seem to get past certain places in life, certain stations in life, that's what the, that's what the definition would call stagnation. Zechariah 3, we just read, it reveals resistance by Satan, which is an attempt to stagnate. When the Bible says that Satan was there to resist, that means he was there to stagnate. Uh, stagnation is satanic, which means it operates through opposers. Yes, that's what the word Satan means. It means to oppose. So um, stagnation is satanic. Um, and which means it operates through opposers. It operates through opposers in the physical realm. It can be in the form of people. It can be in the form of spirits. And then it can operate in the thought life. 
Stagnation can occur in the thought life. Now, Peter was stagnant uh, in his business. He said, I went out to fish. I was out all night and caught none. He couldn't get beyond the point where he caught no fish. He was stagnant in his business. Abraham was stagnant in his family dream. Him and Sarah wanted to have a child. They could not have a child. They were barren. So they were stagnated in their family dream. The man at the pool was stagnated in life. He said, every time I go to get in the water, somebody gets in before me. I come here year after year. He just couldn't get beyond that point. The woman at the well was stagnated in her relationships. She had five men, and the one that she was with at the time Jesus encountered her was not her husband. She was stagnated in relationships. The woman with the issue of blood was stagnated in her health because she was stuck with the doctors year after year, spending money, and couldn't get beyond that point. Adam and Eve got stagnated in their livelihood. He said, from now on, in your livelihood, you're not going to be able to have wealth. You're going to just be able to make enough. You're going you're gonna to toil, and you're going to barely be able to make ends meet. So Adam and Eve got stagnated in their livelihood. Now, for fathers, one of the most frustrating uh, things for fathers, or men in general, actually, is to be stagnated financially. This is one of the things that men struggle with the most. Uh, men like to be breadwinners. They like to be financial pioneers. They like to be um, the person that stands in the position to bring their family to new places and new destinations and new things, new uh, uh, lifestyles. That's just the heart of a father. So that's, I found, in talking to thousands of men over my lifetime, that's one of the most common frustrations for men, and that's to be uh, fa financially stagnated. So as a father, if you have ever felt stuck or stagnated in life or in your finances, I am here to bless you. If you've ever felt stuck or stagnated, I am here to bless you. Now, I want to give you really quick, and I'll be done, three beliefs. There's three, three beliefs. There's more, but these three beliefs are necessary to break stagnated environments. Um, there are things that you have to believe. If you're going to break some stagnated environments in your life, there's some things that you have to believe. So I want to just give you three, and we'll be done. Number one, the first belief that you have to have is that your faith is the force to overcome everything you face in this world. You have to believe that your faith is the force. It's already in you. He already gave it to you. You have the force that's necessary in you already to overcome everything you face, including stagnation. Your faith is the force. You have to believe that. 1 John 5 and 4 says, So whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith you see so in first john he declares that what overcomes in this world the thing that overcomes everything you're going to face in this world even our faith now overcoming overcoming implies successfully dealing with something while in motion successfully dealing with something while in motion that could have stopped or hindered your forward progress. See, overcoming is not a state of stillness. It's not something that you do standing still and doing nothing. If you're standing still and doing nothing, there's nothing to overcome because there's nothing opposing uh, no movement. There's no force necessary to stop something that's already stopped. So the, the term overcoming means while you are moving and while you are progressing, you are moving forward, there is something trying to hinder, something trying to block, something trying to slow down your forward movement, and you have the ability to overcome. That means you can successfully deal with whatever, whatever. I'm going to say that again. You can successfully deal with whatever by your faith. Whatever tries to stop your forward movement, your faith can deal with it. Now, here goes some of the beliefs. Like, you need some of these beliefs right here. For example, in order, to, in order to overcome and defeat stagnation, these are some of the beliefs you need to have. Number one, you, need, you must believe that progress is your right. You must believe that progress as a kingdom citizen, 
you must live with the understanding and the conviction I have a right to progress and I will never stop moving because Jesus paid for my freedom. The Bible says whom the son sets free is free indeed. That means you're free from all stagnation. You're free from all hindrances. You're free from all limits and you have to determine that progressing is my right. Then you have to believe also, you have to believe so much in progressing that you're willing to fight all limitations. Whenever limitations jump up, you have to be willing to fight. You have to be willing to determine I will not be stopped, I will not be hindered, and I will not be slowed down. Glory to God. You must serve notice on all hindrances that you are not the one. I'm going to say that again. You must serve notice. In this life, you have to tell all hindrances, I'm not the one. I am not to be stopped. I'm not going to be stopped. Jesus paid for me to be free to move. And I'm going to continue to progress all the days in my life. All the days of my life. Next, you must, you must determine to stay in a state of meta, metamorphosis through mind renewal. This is one of the beliefs that you have to have. A lot of times, stagnation takes place in the mind. So you have to make the determination by faith, I am going to stay in a state of metamorphosis through mind renewal. I'm always going to learn. I'm always going to grow. I'm never going to stop at any place. And when you see me next year, I will be better than I am this year. Why? Because I'm going to continue to metamorphosize because therein lies my ability to overcome stagnation. Say amen if you got that first point. Now, point number two, the second belief that you need to have uh, the, you need to believe that the kingdom's primary benefit, the kingdom's primary benefit is to break stagnation. You need to understand what the kingdom is for. The kingdom's primary, number one, uno, the top, uh, top uh, um, uh, agenda of the kingdom is to break stagnation in your life. I'm talking spiritual stagnation, natural st stagnation, mental stagnation, and financial stagnation. That is the kingdom's primary benefit to you. Now, you have to believe that. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Listen to what he says. I wish above all things that you mayest prosper, be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. There's three different types of prosperity. Number one, financial prosperity. I wish that you prosper. That's economic prosperity. Be in health. That's physical prosperity. Number three, he says, even as thy soul prosper. That's mental and intellectual prosper, emotional prosperity. So in this scripture, he says, I wish above all things that you have this kind of prosperity. In other words, I wish uh, above all things that you don't get stagnated in any of these three areas. Don't get stagnated in your ec economics. Don't get stagnated in your uh, body. And don't get stagnated in your soul. He wants there to be a flow over you in all three areas of your life. And if you receive that, say amen. That's just one of the beliefs that you have to have if you are going to defeat stagnation. Now, Jesus said in John 10, 10, I came that you might have abundant life. He's not just life. He said, I came that you might have abundant life. Now, abundant life is life unstuck. Abundant life is life with a flow. Glory to God. You ought to say it out of your mouth. I have life with a flow. And it's been paid for, so it's mine. Glory to God. I have life with a flow. It's been paid for, and it is mine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel something happening in the room. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost rumbling around. I feel some people about to break free. I feel some deliverance is about to take place. He told me to come and get you. You are no longer going to be stagnated in life. And you are no longer going to be stuck after today. Now think about the examples that I gave. All the people I talked about, uh, you know, the man at the pool. I talked about the woman at the well. Think about all the people, uh, the examples I gave of stagnated people that got released from their stagnation when they encountered the kingdom. Every one of these people that I mentioned encountered the kingdom and they got released from stagnation. I'm talking about from Abraham and Sarah. They were stagnated in there all the way to the man that they laid at the gate beautiful. He was stagnated because he got laid there every day. He couldn't get beyond that point. Silver and gold have I none, Peter said. But such as I do, I'm talking about the kingdom now. You have to believe that when you stepped into the kingdom of God, 
you step into the system that is primarily looking to break all stagnation in your life. You, I'm going to say that again. When you step into the kingdom of God, you step into the one program. The only way to break stagnation in this world is the kingdom of God. And it is the kingdom's agenda to break you loose in every area of your life. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I'm going to give it to you. Look what he said. I have the use of a synagog name that can break your stagnation. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. I want you to know through the use of the kingdom name uh, Jesus, that's a synagog name. That's a sp supernatural, invisible government of God name. That's an authority that comes from the kingdom of God. He used a kingdom authority to break that man's stagnation, and he jumped up and went into the temple praising God. And that's what you ought to be doing right now because you've been loosed and freed from all stagnation. You ought to have the same mentality as the man that went into the temple. You ought to be praising God. Woo, hallelujah, glory to God. He said, in the name of a, he said, I know I do have something for you. I don't have no silver or gold, but I do have the use of a kingdom name that can break this stagnation that's been laying you at this gate every day. And I came to declare you are not going to lay where you've been. You are not going to stay where you've been. You are not going to play where you've been. You are not going to live where you've been. You are not going to run around where you've been. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to get up and move. I feel a moving in the spirit. I feel a moving in the spirit. Glory to God. It's time for you to move. The kingdom is a jurisdictional power. You might want to write this down. The kingdom is a jurisdictional power with impenetrable custody to determine and to enforce. The kingdom of God is a jurisdictional power with impenetrable custody to determine and to enforce. You have to believe that. In other words, because I am a citizen of the kingdom, the, citizen, the, the kingdom's uh, custody over me is impenetrable. That means that can't, no other jurisdiction can cross the line and determine anything about my life. My life is what Sygog says it is. If he says that I have abundant, free-flowing life, and life more abundantly to the full till it overflow, then that's exactly what the life that I have. Glory, I, I thought I'd get a little bit better shout than that. If the kingdom says I have abundant life with a free flow on it, that's exactly what I have. So you have to believe that the kingdom is a jurisdictional power and its custody over your life cannot be penetrated. If you don't believe that, ask Job, ask the devil. He said, yeah, well, you know, you got a hedge around Job and that, that hedge is a jurisdiction. It means that you've been there, you've placed your name there, you put a hedge around him, and that hedge means for me to stay out. I want you to know that there's a hedge around you. The minute you became a kingdom, kingdom citizen, he put a hedge around you. His custody over you is impenetrable. And now your life is determined and it is enforced by the kingdom of God. And you are going to end up everywhere the kingdom says that you are. You are going to have everything that the kingdom says is yours. You are going to go everywhere. The kingdom says you are going to go in life. Glory to God. Number three, the third belief that I want you to have. I'm closing with this one. We'll be done with this. The third belief that you need is you need to believe the truth about the function of things, including money, including money. You need to believe the function of things. This is anatomy, anatomy 101, the makeup of a thing, how things are made up. You need, to, you need to believe the truth about the function and how things are made up. Watch this now. I'm going to give you a, a definition. Everything in life has a positive or negative flow built into it. Everything in life has a positive and negative flow or negative flow built into it. Now, I'll explain that. Watch this. For example, um, you are listening to me right now. I'm ministering, ministering to you the word of God. So the preached word of God has a flow that leads from, that leads all the way to fruit or results in the lives of true hearers. So the word of God has a flow. Um, it is a flow that God gave the word from the beginning. He said, my word won't return to me void. It will accomplish everything I send it to do. He put the flow on the word right then. So the word has a flow on it that if you hear it right, if you hear it right, that word will flow out of my mouth into your life in the form of results. Everything has a flow. 
Now, however, watch this. If you don't understand or believe the function, the function, the, 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 the anatomy of, a, of the word, the, I'm using the word as an example, but everything has a flow. If you don't believe that things are made like this, everything is made with a flow on it, this is what will happen. For example, let's look at the word. If you don't understand or believe the function of the word is to flow from hearing to meditation to speaking it to doing it to results, the flow of the word can be stagnated. That's where stagnation comes from. When you don't believe the flow of a thing and you don't understand the flow of a thing, you can mess up the flow by not knowing or believing that everything has a flow on it. You can even stagnate something as powerful as the word of God. That's why I said you have to believe how things are made. You have to believe in the function of how things are really made. Now watch this. Um, the Bible says that the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Where did the word go? It went in them. Where did it stay? In them. It got stagnated. It never came out of them in the form of fruit or results. So you see... Even something with a flow like the word of God can have a negative flow if you don't understand the, the, the nature of it, the, the, the anatomy of it. And say amen if you understand that. However, Jesus said in a parable of the sower that some took the word through the natural flow and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold results. What does that mean? That means there's somebody that knows how to hear the word that understand that there is a natural flow on the word, that you are not just to come to church and hear the word and let it stay in your ear, in your heart, in, in your emotions. That word is supposed to turn into some results. And I declare in Jesus' name that you will have no more stagnated words, that you will take every word that God speaks to you and turn it into what he intended to be. Glory to God. He, he intends to bless you with every word. Now you have to understand from now on I'm going to overcome the stagnating the word, I'm going to beat this. How are you going to do it? With my faith. I believe these words are mine. I believe they are possessions. I'm going to take every word he speaks to me and I'm going to turn it into what it belongs. Now watch this. Everything, even that was we use the word as an example. Everything has a flow. Now watch this now. Really important. But many things have a positive and negative money flow. Everything has a flow. But some things have a negative or positive money flow. Watch this. Money, uh, this is a revelation. Holy Spirit gave me this one. I, I, I'll share this one with you uh, for the free. All right, how about that? Um, money is not a thing. Money is a flow that comes off of things. That's why it's called currency. Money is not a thing. As long as you look at money like a thing, it will elude you. Money is not a thing. It is a flow that comes off of things. Let me give you an example. Watch this. In the world, in the world, there is a, uh, in the world system, it's demonic. It's a, it's a devilish arrangement. That's why it says don't be conformed to the world. The world is a devilish arrangement created by the devil. In the world, you all have seen this, uh, flesh has a money flow in the world. Uh, and the deeper you're willing to go in the flesh, the greater the flow. Can I get somebody to say amen to that? I remember, watch this. I remember one time I, I saw this on the uh, front of uh, Yahoo, I think it was. Uh, that was one of the popular um, um, reality people. And I, I don't want to call it, and you would know who they were. And the guy was asking this young lady, well, what do you do? What's your talent? What's your, what do you do? You know, what's your skill? And she got offended because she didn't, she didn't have one. Her skill was flesh. In the world, flesh can be a skill. I'm trying to give you an example. I'm trying to show you that some things, things have, some things have money flows on them. Watch this. In the kingdom of God, cheerful giving has a positive money flow built into it. I said, in the kingdom of God, cheerful giving has a positive money flow built into it. So you don't have to have a million dollars in the bank. You don't have to have all the money you ever going to need in your possession. You need to know I'm in a flow. As long as you got seed in the ground, 
you are handling something with a flow on it that's going to keep money coming into you every time you need it it's going to be there if I was you I'd open up my mouth and say I'm in the flow glory to God see if you don't understand money as a flow you'll think that you have to have all the money you ever going to need in your possession no, that's an that's a erroneous idea about what it is. You have to understand what things have money flows on them. So if you don't have enough money in your life, it's not because you don't have enough money. It's that you're not possessing or handling enough things with money flows. There are some things that have money flows on them. Watch this. Diligence has a positive money flow. Diligence has a positive money flow. The diligent soul shall be made fat. So if you are diligent in life, you are in the flow. If you are diligent in life, you will never be financially stagnated. Obedience has a positive money flow. If you are obedient, willing and obedient, you will do what? Eat the good of the land. See, obedience has a positive money flow. Watch this. Marital harmony has a positive money flow. Marital harmony has a positive money flow. You remember what happened to the Israelite men? He said, you've been sowing a lot. You've been going out there in your field sowing a lot, haven't you? He said, well, how much you been bringing back in? And they said, very little. He said, you've been saying, he said, when you make money, it's like you've been putting your money in pockets with holes in it, ain't it? He said, they said, yeah. He said, that's because how you're treating your wife. I want you to know that uh, marital harmony has a money flow on it. Marital disharmony has a negative money flow on it. If you don't understand how things work, it don't mean it's going to stop working just because you don't understand it. Everything has a flow. Glory to God. Praise and shouting has a positive money flow. What do you think knocked the walls down and took them into their possessions? Took them into the houses they didn't build and the vineyards they didn't plant. Took them into the gold and the silver in the mountains and in the hills. What you think took them in? It was a shout and a praise. So I don't know about you. You can think whatever you think want to think about your praise. But I believe my praise has a positive money flow. I believe the more I shout, the richer I get. I believe the more I praise, the more blessed I am. Glory to God. That's why I'm going to keep a praise on my lips. That's why the Bible says, bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually do what? Be in my mouth because my praise has a positive money flow on it. Just because you don't understand it and don't believe it don't mean it don't work. Now watch this. Now for all you dads out there, this is for you. Glory to God. I'm going to close with you dads. For all you dads out there, watch this now. Godly fatherhood has a positive money flow on it. I'm going to say that again. For all you dads out there, godly fatherhood has a positive money flow on it. Watch this. Remember David? David taught Solomon the things of God and God made David rich. He said, remember my words, son, and don't let them depart from your lips. Write them in a book. Keep them in your heart. He taught him the things of God and God made David rich for it. Remember Job? Job taught his children the things of God and God made Job the riches in the east. Remember Eli, the prophet? He let his sons, Hophni and Phinehas, live ungodly lives in the temple and he died. And so did they. Remember when Cain killed Abel? Here's my question. Where was Adam? Remember, God chose Abraham because he knew he would teach his children the things of God. And Abraham's fatherhood had a multi-millionaire money flow on it. Abraham's fatherhood had a multi-millionaire money flow on it. He sent hundreds of thousands of dollars with the, with the servant just to go find his son a wife. Glory to God. Abraham's fatherhood had a multi-millionaire money flow on it. Watch this. Abraham taught Isaac. And Isaac taught Jacob. And God made Isaac rich. Then Jacob became Israel and he taught Joseph. And then God made Jacob rich for teaching his children. So look at it. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And they say money don't grow on trees. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And they say money don't grow on trees. Watch this. It might not grow on trees, but it certainly flows on trees. It flows on family trees. 
and I'm in the family. I'm in the money family. I am the seed of Abraham. I am in the money family. I am in the I'm in the family where money flows. I don't know about you. You ought to say that out of your mouth because the more you say that kind of stuff into the, into the environment, the more it attracts what you believe in for. I am in the money family. Yeah, yeah, this is a this is a this is a this is a tree that money does grow on. I am the seed of Abraham, and the blessing of Abraham is on me. And I declare that the blessing of Abraham is on you. All of you all that's believers in Christ, and you are citizens of the kingdom of God, you are you are Abraham's seed, and Abraham's blessing is on you. And I declare in Jesus' name, just that alone declares that you will not be stagnated in your finances. Y'all ought to say something to me. You will not be. You will not be. Open up your mouth and say it, would you? you? I will not be stagnated in my finances. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So these are just some examples. I'll give you another example. My dad, my dad, the, 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 the man that raised me as my father, um, he always told us the truth. Whether we liked it or not, he told us the truth. I remember I went to talk to him even when we was adults. I went to talk to him. I was a grown man. I said, hey, I want to talk to you about something. He said, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you're wrong. You're very wrong. And you're just wrong. Now, you need to change your mind and don't do what you're thinking about doing and go sit down somewhere. That's what he told me. I was a grown man. And I remember, I thought back. I said, you know, he always had, whenever I see him, he always had wads of money. He always, I've never seen him broke because godly fatherhood has a positive money flow. I know you're watching, Dad. Love you. Thank you so much for being a godly father. Now, watch this. Now, look at you now. Look at you now. Look at you. Ordering your house. Ordering your affairs. Ordering your family around the things of God. Look at you now. Come on, fathers. Talk to me. I'm talking to you now. Talk back to me. Look at you now. Look where you are now. Look where you are now. Bringing up your family in the things of God. Teaching others the things of God. Even when you deal with other kids in the community, you're teaching them what's right. Guess what? Guess what? That's fatherhood. And guess what? That fatherhood has a money flow on it. Because you have a godly mentality, you're supposed to always have money. Because you have a godly mentality as a man, as a father, you are supposed to always have money. You tell your grandchildren what's right. You tell your grown children what's right. That means you have a fatherhood that's got a money flow. And I don't care if you didn't know this, you know it now. And that's why you got to be ready to fight. You got to be ready to say, I'm a father, I'm a godly father, and I want my money flow. Y'all ain't saying nothing, I want my money flow. I decree and I declare your fatherhood positive money flow is breaking every stagnation causing hindrance in your life and in your finances. I declare, this is what he sent me to give you, all you fathers under the sound of my voice. I declare and I decree. Your fatherhood positive money flow is breaking every stagnation causing hindrance in your life and in your finances. I speak flow over you right now. I speak flow over you right now. I speak flow over you right now in the name of Jesus and we break the spirit of stagnation right now in Jesus name. Amen. If you receive it, give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 I feel freedom. I feel some loosening going on. Glory to God. I feel some movement going on. If you are dead at home where you are, stand up on your feet and walk around. Shake yourself and declare, I'm free to move. I'm not staying where I am. I'm a godly father. My fathership has a money flow on it. Stand up and give God some praise right where you are. There's nothing more powerful than a praising man. Open up your mouth and praise him right now. Take a few steps where you are and declare your freedom. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free to move. And I declare in Jesus' name, no more stagnated days for you. No more stagnated days for you. Stagnation in your life is over. Jesus died and paid for you to be able to move freely and progress and forward move wherever you want to go, wherever you want to take your family, wherever you want to take your grandchildren. We got plans. We got plans for our children's children already. Glory to God. And we're going to be free to accomplish everything we want to do in the lives of all of these generations because we are not stagnating. 
and neither are you. Give him some praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Heads about, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word that we received by faith. Bring what we heard today back to our remembrance. Help us to do the word so that our lives glorify you and bring forth fruit in every way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, if you're watching, if you're watching today, if you're a dad out there and you, you tuned in and you're not a citizen of the kingdom of God, I'm telling you, the kingdom of God is the only government that has legislated and promised all of its citizens will break the spirit of stagnation. Stagnation will no longer hold on to your life because the kingdom has decreed and declared that's how you're going to live. You got to become a citizen. You got to become a part of this kingdom. This government is awesome. It's the best thing that ever hit planet earth. So yeah. if you're here and you've never entered into the kingdom of God as a citizen by faith in Christ, I'm telling you now, it's your time and it's your turn. So if you're there, I want you to do this very simple thing. Just uh, where you are, repeat after me. The Bible says we believe in our hearts and we confess with our mouth and that we are saved. It's just that simple. Because uh, you believe in your heart, that faith translates you into the kingdom of God and your confession seals the deal. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Just repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe, just like the word says, I believe Jesus died and that he rose just for me. And because I believe it, and because I've confessed it, according to your word, I am saved. Now, if you prayed that prayer with us, what we want you to do is reach out to us. We want you to text WE Born Again, WE Born Again, you ought to see it on the screen, WE Born Again to 54244. And that needs to be in all capital letters, WE Born Again to 54244. We would love to hear from you because we'd like to correspond with you and kind of tell you what the next steps are. This confession and this uh, belief is just a beginning. It's a beginning, but we have to teach you how to keep moving in the things of God and keep growing in the kingdom of God. So make sure that you reach out to us. Now, that God bless you. Um, I hope that you enjoyed and received from the word. And most of all, I hope that you feel a sense of freedom in your life because you are not supposed to be stagnated in any area of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let's receive Brother James. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. That's a powerful word in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am here to do faithful giving and receiving uh, as we continue to sow our tithe and offerings and first fruit at the embassy. We expect these benefits, uh, the open window of heaven, uh, blessings to continue to be poured out on us. God rebuking all devouring financial oppression and receiving grace for bold power moves. And that right there was a bold power move. Glory to God. So now, um, we, uh, as we give, we want you to, to give to give your tithes and offerings uh, to text WEICC in all caps to 54244 or to cash app. Uh, it's uh, dollar sign W E I C C uh, and the, the uh, number seven uh, to give to the doctors. So on word sowing first uh, first fruit, uh, the cash app is dollar sign D R S A P G seven. I'm gonna repeat that one. D R uh, dollar sign D R S A P G seven. Sound like a rapper or something. <laughs> so let's bow our head. Let's go. Let's pray over our offense. Father, we thank you for being faithful to our word concerning the word today. And we believe and receive these blessings in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, if you are watching us today and you don't have a church home, you want to be connected to a church family here at WEICC, we would love for you to be a part of our church family, Prophetess and I, and uh, would love to be your pastors. So even if you uh, are a cyber member, it's okay. We, will, we are receiving cyber members. So if you are 
are looking for a church connection and you want WEICC to be your church connection, I want you to follow the instructions on the screen. Somebody give it to me. What is it? Text, um, all caps, member at the embassy, member at the embassy, in all caps, to 54244. Now reach out to us. Some of you all, you've been watching us for a while. You've been tuning in faithfully. We appreciate that. Continue to do so. Continue to share. But if you want to be a part of this church, listen, there's a grace on this church that is awesome. There's a flow on this church that is absolutely awesome. And you need these graces in your life. Amen. Glory to God. Now, if that, that's everything, right? All right. Now, we just want to uh, bless you as we leave. And to say to you all, once again to all you fathers, happy Father's Day. Now go out and enjoy your family. Enjoy the rest of your day. This is your day. It's your time to be celebrated. Let your family love on you and celebrate you and enjoy your day. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, uh, bless everyone under the sound of my voice. I speak grace, peace, and blessings over everyone under the sound of my voice. I speak flow over everyone under the sound of my voice. I speak supernatural flow. I speak no more stagnation over everyone under the sound of my voice. You are free to prosper. You are free to prosper. You are free to prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Go with grace.